In 1996, in the sleepy town of Poughkeepsie, New York, women began going missing. But these women were not college students from Vassar, or young newlyweds, or successful businesswomen. They were the sex workers of Poughkeepsie, and not a priority for the police force in the area. A local man by the name of Kendall Francois was abducting and murdering the local sex workers. It would take two years and two escaped victims before the crimes would be believed, investigated, and solved. This is a brief history of the Poughkeepsie Killer. As always, this video contains graphic content that may not be appropriate for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. On July 26, 1971, Kendall Francois was born in Poughkeepsie, New York. For much of his young life, Francois was teased, tortured, and made fun of by his classmates due to his large stature, his weight, and his failure of basic hygiene. The teasing caused Francois to stick to himself. He didn't talk much and had little to no friends. As Francois grew, so did his stature, and in middle school, he began playing sports like football and wrestling, both places where his size was appreciated and not criticized. Overall, Francois had a relatively normal childhood. While impoverished, his parents were caring and he was considered to be a normal kid. Francois eventually graduated high school without incident and joined the U.S. Army in 1990 at the age of 19. In 1994, Francois was discharged from the Army and returned to Poughkeepsie to live with his family. The same year, Francois began attending the local community college and received a job working as a janitor for the local school district. Francois was eventually promoted in his job to a hall and detention monitor in 1996, the same year that things would change for Kendall Francois. Despite having served in the army, attending college, and securing a job, Francois continually felt ostracized due to his large size, unattractiveness, and his seeming inability at basic hygiene. So on October 24, 1996, at the age of 25, Kendall Francois picked up 30-year-old sex worker Wendy Myers. Francois negotiated payment for Myers' services, and once agreed, the two began having sex. They continued until Francois became enraged and began accusing Myers of ripping him off for the deed. Unable to control his anger, Francois began choking Myers and did not stop until she had died. After killing Myers, Francois returned to his family home, bathed a woman's body in his bathtub, and finally relegated her to a black storage bag in the attic, where she would remain. Wendy Myers was reported missing the following day by her boyfriend, but the case was not a priority due to her chosen profession. Just a month later, Francois picked up another sex worker, this time a 28-year-old local woman by the name of Gina Barone. Barone met with Francois at his family home, where the two negotiated services and then had intercourse in the garage of the house. Again, Francois became angry during the deed and choked Barone to death while accusing her of ripping him off. Barone's body was also moved to the attic along with Myers. All the while, Francois's parents were living in the home and had no idea as to the horrors that were happening under their noses and what was stored just above their heads in the attic. Just two days later, Francois was asked by his mother for a ride to work. Francois drove his mother to her job at the Hudson River Psychiatric Hospital, and on his way home, picked up a third sex worker, this time named Kathy Marsh. The two negotiated in the car, and Marsh allowed Francois to drive her back to his home, where they would be able to engage in sex acts. 
This time, Francois and Marsh finished having sex before Francois went on a rage and choked the woman to death. As with his first victim, Francois washed Marsh's body in the bathtub before storing her in the attic with his earlier victims. By this time, the first two victims had been reported missing to the police, but were largely ignored due to their work as sex workers. Marsh wouldn't be reported missing until early 1997, where it was also revealed that she had been pregnant during the time of her death. In January of 1997, Francois left his job for one at another school, but was quickly fired from his new position. Around the same time, another local woman, Kathleen Hurley, was reported missing by her family. It was with that information on a potential fourth victim that the police department finally began to take the cases seriously and suspect that there may have been a serial killer in their midst. One of the officers eventually began looking for patterns between the missing person cases. After an extensive investigation, Francois's home was put under surveillance and sex workers in the area noted that Francois was, quote, rough during sex. Even while under investigation, Francois was unable to control his primal urges. After meeting with the police, Francois picked up yet another sex worker named Mary Healy Graconi. Graconi would meet the same fate as the girls before her and become yet another forgotten body relegated to the attic crawl space. In the fall of 1997, a sex worker named Michelle Eason would also go missing. After Eason's disappearance, Francois was continued to be followed by the police and was given a string of parking citations which eventually led to his vehicle being impounded. In January of 1998, Francois was taken in for questioning but admitted to nothing. After all, there were no crime scenes, there were no bodies, and the women they suspected of being missing held risky jobs and had been known to be transients. Francois even agreed to a lie detector test, and he passed, not shockingly, with flying colors. The police were stumped. Just days after his questioning, Francois picked up a sex worker, Laura Gallagher, for his unusual craving of sex with a side of death. Gallagher managed to free herself and went to the police with her information. Francois was picked up and charged with assault and served only seven days in jail for the charge. After his release, he returned home and continued his string of killings almost instantly. Francois killed three more sex workers between May and September of 1998 before finally making a mistake. On September 2nd, 1998, Francois picked up his last sex worker, Diane Franco. While attempting to strangle Franco, the woman managed to break free and convince Francois to drive her back to Main Street in exchange for not reporting him. Francois agreed and dropped Franco off at a gas station, where she reported her assault. Detectives met her and brought her in to file a complaint against Francois. He was once again picked up by police and brought in for questioning. But what happened this time was shocking. After several hours of interview, Francois admitted knowledge of the missing women and eventually confessed to murdering eight women in total. Francois was officially arrested and charged with second degree murder. A search warrant was also immediately drawn up allowing the police to find the bodies that had been stored in the attic of the Francois home. In October of 1998, Francois was formally charged with eight counts of first-degree murder, eight counts of second-degree murder, and one count of assault. Advised by his counsel, Francois pled guilty to the counts of first-degree murder to avoid the potential for the death penalty. In August of 2000, after a failed appeal, Francois was formally sentenced to life in prison without parole, and was also made aware that he had contracted HIV from one of his victims. 
though other sources have stated that Francoise's HIV diagnosis happened back in 1995. Kendall Francois, the Poughkeepsie killer, died in 2014 of apparent natural causes while serving his time in prison. He was 43 years old. I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Brief History. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you to my patrons who support this series. It is much appreciated. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss the next one. Stay safe and I'll see you next time. Bye.